early morning adventures to get out to the water for epic fall fishing. Crack of dawn, heading out to my favorite spots. See you there. Welcome back, fishing friends, to another adventure. Guys, I hadn't fished this spot. Whew. I don't know how many years. So I got this little pond behind me. We'll throw something in there. I'm not going to turn around. Well, I guess I can because you're not going to be able to see anything with the sun. <laughs> and man, this is looks way different. I know along the rocks over there you could catch crappie. We'll see if we can get back over there. But here, this is a good spot. There used to be like this pencil grass, needle grass in here that you could catch uh, some good bass in. And the fish like to come in here kind of close. They stack up in this little cove. Main lake starts out there and it goes way over to our left. It's a big lake. This is actually... Uh, Chris Zaldane's home waters, the tournament angler. Anyway, hey, if you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. My name's Alan, and uh, I make fishing videos and all kinds of videos. And uh, it's a chilly morning, way different than these 105, 104. So right now it's like 36 degrees with the wind straight into my back, which is kind of nice. So, um, I know I've caught crappie along the rocks there before, but I see a ton of cabbage in there. So we may have to uh, adjust. Anyway, so I'm gonna start throwing some stuff here, testing some lures. <clears throat> We're gonna see what we can do. Maybe a drop shot even, maybe drop shot the pond behind us. Cause I know that there's bass and things like that in that pond. I don't know about crappie, but all right, let's get hooked up and see what we can catch. All right, guys, so I'm throwing a tube first. That's just bouncing along here. Well, it's looking really shallow. It's weird. It's like the composition of the lake has changed. bit of cabbage there used to be some decent depth in here anyway I'm using a six foot six Mach 2 with a speed spin so I'm just dragging this a little bit let it sit I think that's a campsite in front of me, if I'm not mistaken. Back over in there. I'm curious about over here where the crappie are on the rocks. I may have to hike in there a bit. Right around the corner here to my left is where the boat ramp is. Boy, it is nice and cool. Such a change. 
from earlier with all that heat. <clears throat> all right, guys, so I switched it up. I got 15 pound braid to a 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. But really, I'm here today to test some baits, but I can't resist throwing the tube. So what I'm using, guys, a little lipless crankbait here. Just right off, there's like a shallow here, and then it drops off. Not a lot of cabbage, so I just kind of let it sink. Oop, got some mud on here. I let it sink and then really slow cranks because it's a cool morning. Then I let it sit there, crank, let it sit, crank. And I'm surprised nobody's out here boating. Yeah, I don't use this kind of a lure very often. Oh, that looks great. Yeah, I don't use this lure very often, but sometimes you just, it's a confidence thing. You just know. So I'm usually doing 20 pound braid, 20 pound fluorocarbon leader, but I dropped it down because I'm not up in Iowa where I have to worry about pike coming in and crushing and line frays. So I was thinking about the other day, I was like, what am I doing? So I just made that adjustment. And it, yeah, it's really peaceful out here. Calm. Yep, that looks good. There we go, a little bit of cabbage. So I was wondering if there's going to be any little crappie around the rocks there or that other spot where I was because I definitely wanted to try to catch some. Oh, something busted way out there. Oop. Was that a fish? Nope. Something thumped it though. And there's no cabbage, maybe it was a rock. Anyway, so what are you guys doing catching? I know my buddies up north are still catching smallmouth, pike. Drop a comment below on some of the stuff you, you've been catching. What do you think I should throw next? Jackhammer? That's another one I rarely, if ever, throw. Oh, a chatterbait, I mean. The little jackhammer. Never, ever throw that thing. Oh, yeah, and I got a little blade bait I want to test out. Oh, yeah, guys, check out the moon. I just saw the reflection in the water, and I was like, what is that? We may switch to the blade bait first. Never thrown a blade bait. This one's a little steel shad. And then the, the chatter bait with a little, I think I'm gonna put one of those little spark shad trailers on there.
Yeah, way the heck out there. I keep seeing fish bust. It's got to be carp or gar. And I thought about fishing along the docks for crappie over there too, but the water is still really shallow. Normally this water's up into the trees here. And you can't walk along the bank. But it is up than what it has been. See the bank all the way through there? I didn't realize this was all gravel in here. So the big question I've got guys am I going to do a monster bass subscription again I don't know I gotta think long and hard about it they've got a if you get the 12 month subscription you get two rods so I think I may ask them if we can, if there's seven foot two and a seven foot six bait casting and then uh Spin cast. I'm not much on bait casting. I just nope. I've done it before and I'm just eh. but anyway, I wonder if they could substitute like maybe a couple of boxes from previous months, subscription boxes, and then keep the seven foot two spinning. Oh, look at that wake right there. There's something big going through here. I see shatter coming through. Do you see him? Rippling on the water. Holy cow, there's a ton of them. Boy, just a whole bunch of them just came whoosh, rushing through. Where's the bass? Where's the sand bass? The striper should be crushing my lure. I got a ton of, these, ton of these guys. I don't really mind if they get snagged up. This is part of that stash that my brother had given me. Somebody had given him. This guy had retired from fishing. This giant tackle box full of just tons of lures. And of course, I had no clue what a bunch of them were. This is a few years ago. And so I'm still trying to figure out how to, when I'm gonna use some of them. Ooh, was that a hit? All right, guys, on the rattle trap. Just walking this bank here. Check it out, it's a nice bass. It's easy, there we go. Come on. <laughs> Hooks everywhere, huh? All right, a little dirty there. Just have to get that out of there. All right, so we got one. Good stuff. There's the boat docks. So it's just pitching in here. It kind of dives down. So we're gonna keep fishing. I switched it up to uh, the jackhammer, and I put on the little 3.3 Kitek. It just looks so good, and it was sitting there ready to be put on. And there's been fish working in here. Rather shallow. So hopefully we'll get something. Oh yeah, that looks good in the water. There we go. Here's a guy getting a boat in.
All right, guys. Snag that chatterbait. Uh, and I don't know what. Just a rock out there, I guess. Now I'm throwing an Arky's little swim jig with a, a BFE, Big Bite Baits BFE trailer. Maybe not the ideal conditions to throw a, a swim bait, but I'm bringing it slow and just letting it creep along down there. I can feel it bouncing along down there. That looks good in the water and that trailer. If you never tried these Arky lures, you gotta go for it. Man, they're just, they're really nice. Weed Guard is nice. There's the BFE on there from Big Bite Bait. Best flipper ever, I think is what it stands for. I like those and I also like their, they've got a craw that's really good, or Cream's got a craw. And that one's from Carl's Bates isn't bad either. All right, guys, I switched to a Santone jig head with a Kitek, the 3.8. I didn't get anything on the spark shad, not even a sniff. So now I'm just working this along that edge line. See the thing is here you got white bass too. Oh, got one guys, I'm hooked up. Just along that edge again. Oh, he came off. So this is what I'm using. I'm counting him. He's got the little Santone head right there. Dang it. I'm counting that one just right off that edge there. The So I'm letting it sink down and then just kind of let it sit there because a lot of times when it drops and hits, the tail will flutter and they'll just stare at it and then you twitch it a little more and then they'll just crush it. I don't think that fish had it all the way in his mouth. Ooh, I felt something there. I don't think he had it all the way gagged down. I think he was just gripping it and didn't, didn't really get hooked. I think I picked up some cabbage here. 
Now there used to be some real nice little pencil grass type stuff, and I don't see it anymore. Well, you used to be able to cast in that. Yeah, I got into some cabbage. You used to be able to cast into that, and, and uh, well, you'd have all kinds of critters hanging around in there. So this lake here has been host to some tournaments. So I don't mind sharing this location. Ray Roberts, it's so big. I'm in a good spot right here because it is breezy, but the wind is at my back. I'm standing along this little forest. So it's not bu bugging me too much. But as soon as I get out any more to my left towards the open, the wind is kind of poking around there. I always cast sidearm, which isn't the best thing, but super comfortable. Dang, guys, look how shallow it is. Normally, you'd be standing up here, fishing along the rocks, and you'd have pretty good luck. The crappie would just hang all around in here. But dang, if it's like this, I mean, the water looks like it's up, but really, it's not anywhere <laughs> close to where it should be. So, I may throw a, a little swim jig bombing on the other side of the weeds there. See if we can get anything. I did spook a catfish that was laying under some weeds here. Man, this stinks. Well... We'll give it a shot and see for a little bit and then we'll hit this little dinky pond up here <laughs> see what happens i don't think i'm gonna throw my little jig my little homemade crappie jigs in this uh, i'm gonna keep going through here first take a look and see what we got over there Yeah, I remember back in the day you could walk through here. There was a nice trail. Little nature hikes and stuff. I remember it was so dang hot you could sit under a tree here. This tree, none of this had fallen over. You could sit under this one and fish the, the rocks there. Actually, you could sit up here and fish the rocks down there. Oh, it's a beaver's chewed these down. Holy cow. Let's see if I can get around there. I'm not going to be able to climb over that. I got too much crap. I don't know if I can walk through here either. Ooh. We'll see. Too much crap. Hmm. Plus it looks shallow in there. Alright. Back in there. That's pretty neat.
Any sign of Bigfoot? All right, guys, we're gonna throw the drop shot, see what we can do. I could see a ton of little fish along the rock, so I'm thinking maybe something will come, come by and start hunting. I've got the flatworm. So what I do here is I've got this little keeper right here. It's a little piece of rubber. And it keeps this thing from getting all kinked up for the most part. I mean, it, it's kinked up now. But it helps tremendously. There we go. All right. So there's our little Berkeley flatworm. All stunk up. Oh yeah, there's some depth there. All right, guys, we're hooked up. Let's see what we got here. Crappie fishing, but I got a nice bass. There we go. Oh, it's a little smallmouth. Hugging the rocks. It's good stuff, good stuff. All right guys, I caught that one on the new Crappie Thunder. Got four pound line on here. Just with a slip bobber jig in one of my little homemade crappie jigs. Sorry about the wind, but it's Texas for you. All right, guys, I got these new quarter ounce jug jigs in. These are these little OW Sniper football head tungsten jigs here from Beast Coast. And uh, they're pretty small. They kind of emphasize the trailer. I got a little Smalley Beaver on here from Reaction Innovations. So I'm gonna pitch this around. But man, if you haven't ever tried these, pick them up. They've got a lot of different types in there, but this thing is just nice and compact. So this will be perfect for up in Iowa for smallmouth. Largemouth will hit it too, but go get you some. All right guys, this little Beast Coast open water OW Sniper. 
smallmouth crush approved is awesome I'm just kind of bouncing it along down there letting it cause a ruckus I lost one but that's you know open hooky and got a lot of rock down here they're not very expensive hey go check them out get you some It's a nice drop off right down there. Yep, look at that sucker scoot along down there. This one's the hybrid one. It's got a little bit of uh, hair in there, bucktail. So I keep moving up and down the stretch here right over there it's Oklahoma I almost went up to that other little spot where I catch all those smallies I was thinking about maybe doing that tomorrow. All right, guys, I'm going to head home. It's getting late. So two spots, two days. Yeesh. Slim pickings. So I don't know. It didn't seem like the barometric pressure was changing too much, but I still should have had some more fish. But I uh, had that one little smolly there. Got to test out the new crappie rod, and then uh, my, one of my little jigs caught him. So that was a lot of fun. All right. Let's get back and uh, see if I can make some lures. So I made some bucktails and I'm uh, going to try to make a few more. I'm going to get a nice healthy stash of them and then uh, I'll be all set for summer. All right guys, see you back at the Worldwide Headquarters. All right guys, we're back here at the Worldwide Headquarters and the fishing, it was a bit rough out there, but I got to test out some lures, which I'm really uh, happy about. And uh, we had that cold front come through, so things were, barometric-wise, were not as they usually are. But I'm counting that one that came off there. So I fished quite a bit a while, and uh, nothing else, not even fishing for the crappie. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on tying a couple of uh, uh, marabou jigs for smallmouth, largemouth, and pike will hit them. And these are my Mistress series jig heads. Now I've been tying some for quite a while now and I'm getting better at it, but I'm not perfect. So uh, some of these are gonna be gray and white Mistress and then black and maybe a little black and gray. So let me get this thing rolling. Let me get you in the stand and then uh, we can talk about it. There we go. slack here all right you should be positioned right there perfectly got a whole bunch of tackle orders in normally I don't do like um an order like an unboxing but I did get some of these Beast Coast jigs in and these things are terrific I like them because they're tight and compact they're tungsten it's a little football head and I had thrown the Bitsy Bug so many times trying to catch uh, and did catch smallmouth. And I even caught some northern rock bass up in Iowa. But this is a tight, compact jig. Look at that football head on there. And there's not much skirting material because the emphasis is going to be on the trailer. So it's 
perfectly designed there, balanced. And I'm thinking for the trailers I'm going to use, I've got quite a few I use for some of the my Arky ones. Uh, and I used an Arky one uh, this weekend that you saw, you'll see in the video. I didn't catch anything on it, but man, it looked good. So this will be a smaller trailer. I'm thinking like a little paddle tail, maybe a curly tail grub. People forget about curly tail grubs. Or like the sweet beaver, which is from Reaction Innovations, which is one of those little beaver type things. But really, this is supposed to be small and compact. One thing about smaller baits is they'll catch large and small fish. Sometimes if they're too big, you eliminate the fun of catching some of the smaller ones. Now, I'm not doing any tournament fishing. I'm fishing for fun, so I want to catch fish. And there are times where I throw big baits because I'm really confident in it and I'm going to try to go for it. But I also like to throw little ones. Well, like this fall when I was in Iowa on the jigging for crappie down there, I caught a that pike. So anyway, I got a bunch of these. And I got some other uh, lures in. All right, so what are we going to do? We're going to be working on the Mistress series. Let me get this thing started. So I've been watching videos on some of these other tying outfits and you know there's there's just a lot of different ways to do it. So <laughs> mine isn't gonna be like somebody else's and I just kind of do my own thing. Is it perfect? No, but it works for me. All right, so this one's gonna be white on the bottom kind of like I did the crappie ones, and gray on top. So let's take a look at this. This one, I want it to be kind of, well, I don't want to say too long, but I want it to be relatively long. <clears throat> so I've got some white marabou here. Oh, yeah. The thing is, I got the ceiling fan on, and that always happens. I get these stragglers that want to show up. You know, that want to blow back in here. Come on, get out of there. Ooh, 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 ooh. I don't want to lose any of these little plumes here. Dang it, I got one wrapped in there. All right. Oh, did it slip a little? Oop, look at that. What a catch, what a catch. Okay, yeah, I don't need to be losing any of this. All right. I'm gonna put just a little dab of glue here. The other thing is, guys, I've got my, I'm actually ordering some actual head cement because I noticed with the super glue is that sometimes it leaves that residue on there. And I'm not digging the residue on there. Okay, so this is going to be cut. Look at that, how the fan blows that. I don't want to turn the fan off because I'm going to start sweating my rear end off. Now we're going to go to this side right here. Roll her over. Where's my gray? Here's my gray. We're going to snip this here. I know you guys can't see, but that's okay. I'm trying to move kind of quick here because of the how the fan is. People are going to be like, dude, just turn the fan off. Well, I can't because I'm going to be sweating my rear end off. All right. Come on, Mr. Straggler. Uh-oh, uh-oh. There we go. I got the straggler wrapped up in there. Now sometimes I'll put a little bit of flash in this. So I want the gray on top and the white on bottom to simulate shad. And in my case, where I'm gonna be fishing, it's these chubs and shiners. All right, that's gonna look, I could probably get it tighter to the head right there 
but that's gonna work. All right, oops. Okay, let me take a look at this. Some of them I'm gonna have flash. This one's gonna have no flash. Hey, you, I see you, get over here. Uh-huh, all right. Okay, guys, that's looking really good right there. I want it to be big and fluffy. Now, remember, I'll slide a piece of, of uh, like a Senko or, hey, come on, quit blowing off. I don't need these pieces to come off of here. I'll slide it up on the shank there so it poofs up a little bit more. guys dang it all see these little ones you're always gonna have some come off but when you start getting OCD so this is the gray and white mistress now the the camera you can't really tell the gray very well but trust me it's out there and you can see it so gray on top and the white on the bottom and that's gonna be absolutely phenomenal all right so, my very strange and awkward way I do my knot tying, it works for me, and that's just, I don't know, it's just how it is. <laughs> All right, so pull her through, there's one, come on, fat fingers guys, fat fingers, what is going on here, look at that, look at that. I'm getting better, guys. I'm getting better. Getting better. Where's my glue? You stay under control there. All right. Now, these are these jig heads that I got. They're, they're good ones, but... I can see where I missed a little bit with the nail polish. So I did it, they, they came unpainted and I just, the nail polish is a quick way to do it. I hadn't determined if I'm gonna put eyes on these bigger ones or not. But uh, let's get this one out. All right, now it doesn't look like this underwater. It'll be, it'll compact down, but it'll puff and breathe. I mean, you guys know how Marabou is. All right. So this one is the gray and white mistress. Now I'm gonna work on a black, solid black mistress. We're gonna hang him over here. All right. <clears throat> Guys, I know I'm an idiot with this stuff, but it is so much fun to tie these. Am I <clears throat> a pro? Am I ever gonna be, get to be like a super pro? No. And that's, that's fine with me. You know, these are just for me to use. Now, I already have people asking me to make some for them. And I don't mind doing that. They're friends or family. <laughs> so, you know, they're, they're going to get what's, you know, what it is. And it, it's not going to be anything super fantastic. All right. Now, I did have some... Boy, this one's rough. So, I'll probably repaint this one. I did have some other skirted jigs that lost their skirts. And come on. All right, guys, now this is a football head that I'm repurposing from. You can kind of see it's beat up a little bit, but the skirt just disintegrated. And I was thinking, hey, you know, maybe I can turn it into a, uh, a bucktail jig. It was just a regular football head jig, and I said, you know what? I don't, have, I don't have any football head style uh, marabou or bucktails. So, hang on a second here, guys. Just separating some of this. So I thought, hey, you know what? Maybe I should make one. Let's try this. I've never done it before. Let's give it a try. So that's what we're going to do. This one's a little bit longer. So. The 
this is going to be kind of a big jig. All right. Let's get the show started here. No. Nope. Don't start trying to blow away. So the key is I got to avoid what's left of that weed guard. I mean, this thing I used it so much, it was just coming apart. So, oops, sorry, I think I got you there. All right, let's get this guy off. To be honest, I can't even tell you which, uh, which company football head style jig that is sorry guys I'm trying to corral some of these all right so the way this is we may be doing a couple of applications here all right let's get around this let's get you there you're not moving. Let's get you here. Dang it. It's just it is what it is. You start getting your fluffs all over where it's wanting to come off. Here you are. It's a terrible idea to have the fan on, but it is what it is. All right. There we go. Let me make sure this is spread evenly. get that from when I was in junior high we had a, this old crow of a teacher you know how those types are I need you to cooperate Ooh, I want to get it around that all right this one's a little more closer and compact than the other one so this is the black edition mistress This one's got a nice fluff on it. Oh, oh, oh. This is going to be epic. All right, guys. I'm not going to lie. I'm super excited about this one. Yeah, it's kind of fluffy and poofy, but that's, that's how it is. myself enough room to do two fingers in here because of that weed guard but maybe I can make it work fat fingers guys fat fingers fat fingers there we go come on got it room for one more. If 
for this noob tying. One more. No, I don't think so. Do not think so. And it gets it gets stuck on my thumbnail. I just about had it when I was saying I didn't. That hook, the shank of that hook keeps getting me. I mean, the hook itself. There's such a deep shank on there. Come on. There we go. Look at that. Okay, so this one is super puffed up, and you know what? That's fine with me. All right, guys, we got to get the glue in here. I've seen what these look like in the water fluffed up and puffing and it may look like it's a lot now dang it I think I got too much on there it may look like it's a lot now but when it gets in the water it's gonna look good all right let's get this guy out of here oops let's not drop it all right, there we go. Excellent. Okay. Let me see. We got one more we're going to do. Then I got to go take care of some other stuff. Let's get this guy in here. doing an all white one because I've never done an all white one but yeah we can do an all white one let's do that so this is the mistress white color edition And let me get some flash because this one will definitely have some flash. Flash. Oh, yeah, guys. I use these Harbor Freight little ammo cans. And a couple years ago, they were selling these for like three bucks a piece. So I brilliantly picked up a few. It was just by pure luck I saw one of their flyers and I said I gotta have them and so I use them to store tackle and stuff like this no oh, where are you guys going a whole bunch are blowing away come on in that typical marabou These I got from uh, Barlow's. This Marabou. Which is right here by me. It's over in Richardson, I think. He's just floating everywhere.
right, ooh, I'm almost at a at a thread there. Yep, some mistakes on this one for sure, but that's okay. I'm you know, still learning, trying to figure things out here. We're almost there. Just a little pinch more. Perfect, perfect. Come here, you. Hopefully you guys can see that. go and of course dang it I had it and I lost it one and one more let's get our glue on here So we got this guy with some flash in it. All right, we're all set.
I messed that one up just a little bit. When I tied that first knot, it got down. There we go. All right. Hey, woo. Little bit of glue. So now we got a white puffy one. All right, I'm setting that one over to glue. All right, guys, I got to get out of here. I got other stuff going on, but I just wanted to give you just um, uh, to see what I've been working on there in the Mistress series. I'm trying to repurpose some of those. I got like two, three more, four more that some I put eyes on, others I didn't. We're going to test them out and see. And, uh, I'm going to tie some more. I may not make a video, but uh, I may show you some finished products. All right, thanks for hanging out with me. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. And um, hey, go out there and get your lures wet. Have fun. Keep me posted on the things you're catching. And my bushcraft buddies, enjoy this cool weather when you're out there. Until next time, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.